Hi guys, my name is Christina and welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I decided to gonna talk to you about my process of preparing my comic for printing. And this process is actually way longer than you might suspect. It's not just dropping my files into InDesign and preparing it. It's more than this. It's preparing the quality of my comic for printing and bringing it to my personal standard. And, and it involves a lot of stuff. So I decided I'm gonna take you with me on this journey and share with me how I'm approaching this. And I don't know, maybe it will be helpful for you. I hope at the very least it might be entertaining. So let's go. In today's video, I wanted to talk about first the problems, things that prevented me from printing the comics, certain blogs that I personally have for actually doing the steps and about how I started to approach my very first problem and the major problem. First, let's specify what I mean, what I'm saying a printed a comic. I wouldn't call it publishing. I think it's indie publishing, but it's just basically making the, my comic available in printed version for my readers. So I'm not gonna call it publishing. Oh, maybe I will for the name of this video because I'm pretty sure more people are gonna click on this if it has this title. But anyway, that's basically what I mean to prepare my comic for printing and actually getting a proper ISBN and everything. So I guess in a sense it is publishing. Okay, I'm gonna call it publishing from now on. Never mind. I had several blocks for doing this and actually addressed it on Patreon, but I thought I'm gonna go on YouTube and like blah 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 about this a lot. First is that my comic is currently like as I'm, re I'm releasing it on chapter 6 and I'm releasing it a little faster on Patreon, but basically for everybody it is on chapter 6. I'm currently drawing chapter 8 and sketching, like I'm actually almost finished with chapter 8 and I'm sketching out chapter 9. So there are several problems with that. I knew that if I have my comic available in printed form, I would like to give people a little bit more than they already have online. So there is some extra material that it makes sense for them to buy it. So uh, logically, it would make sense to give people six chapters and complete the chapter six in the printed version. Or if I can just add chapter seven in there in the mix, so if people decide to spend their money, they get extra material. But there is one problem with this is that my comic is full color and printing is expensive. And I knew if I'm gonna put chapter seven in there, it's gonna be, it's gonna be <laughs> almost 300 pages. So it's gonna be pretty expensive to print and the price of the comic would be expensive and I just wouldn't feel comfortable to put something that expensive on the market, even if I'm not getting even much money back from it. I wanna keep the price similar to bookstore price, even though I'm printing myself. So it's very hard to do with printing when you're not printing in huge bulk and when it's a full color. So that was the first problem. And another problem I knew if I start printing, I have this long goal in mind. If I start printing now, uh, I'm, it means I'm starting effectively printing my comic and then I will have to have another bundle later on and another bundle later on. And I want them to have logical logic to their bundle upness. I don't know, to logic to how I combine the chapters. And chapters one to seven really don't go together as a bundle. Chapters one to five go together as a bundle. And then chapters six, seven, and eight go together in a bundle and they're longer. So they're gonna be approximately the same amount of pages. And then we shall see when I get there. That was another thing. I didn't wanna print chapters one to seven because they don't really narratively work together as a unit, but chapters one to five do. That was another conflict that I had that I, I feel like I have to provide extra material but at the same time I, I it makes more sense to just print chapters one to five and at another point if I print for example chapters one to five now it means I'm on track to actually print chapters six to eight next year and then next year to print something so I can have it on schedule and planned so I like to have my things planned on schedule and logical that's kind of what the curl that I had to jump over do this what you do with the hurdles but basically I wanted I needed to make a decision on this particular question and another problem that I had is the fact that I realized that I would have to redraw majority of chapter two and the reason to this being uh, I, ha I made a video uh, I think it's called things I could have done better and it's about things I have in my comic that I personally don't like and there I, I will link it somewhere here. But basically in that video, I'm mentioning that I'm not happy with how chapter two looks like. And chapter two in my comic, I'm gonna give you some visual aids. I'm gonna throw a picture somewhere here so you can understand what I'm talking about. So the story of how my comic was created, I started it with chapter one, but chapter one was black and white and it was done in just lines, basically. It just 
black and white lines. And it's because I just was starting, I didn't know if I gotta continue with the comic, it was just a test, I wanted to see if I can do it, if it's something that I really enjoy, if this is the medium I wanted to tell my story in, because before it was a novel and I was like testing the waters. And after I realized, yes, I do wanna do it, I had good response and I felt comfortable, I realized, you know what, I'm gonna do next chapter in color and just start doing in color from now on. So chapter two was the first chapter I did in color and it, it really shows and doesn't show in the way that it's like terrible color work. It mostly shows in that every page kind of has its own style. I was figuring out how to, you know, draw, what style do I even want for color because before I just used to draw uh, just full-on paintings in color, but obviously comic I couldn't do the same amount of details, it's just not viable. So I was just testing and the style changes throughout pages so you have like first three pages in one style then style shifts and shall then style shifts super drastically then it shifts again then i decide to use different brush so it feels like three different artists were contributing to this chapter and uh, the level of detail kind of jumps around and i real like i do some really like photo real details i mean i'm not I'm not calling the page for real, but like some for the real elements of drawing I'm using on these chapters that I very soon realize not gonna fly for my comic. So this whole chapter is like very all over the place type of chapter. That's one of the problems with this chapter. And then I went and redrew chapter one. Basically, I just added colors to the lines. So chapter one, ironically, is the second painted chapter in my chapter lineup. So it looks way better, more consistent, and and they, they're already figured out a lot of things. Aside from style problem in chapter two, chapter two is also the chapter where I have my character of Sekai, my protagonist, most inconsistent. It's, I'm gonna make a whole video about this, but basically it's definitely reflected my own opinion about my character at that time, is that I didn't know really how she looked like. I knew that she has white hair, that she has green, gray, blue eyes type of situation, and yeah, that's basically, uh, and I knew that she had like a like tattoo, like in the comic they call stigma, but it's basically a tattoo on the back of her neck, and that I knew the clothes that she wears. And it's like, obviously you can say it's very, very generic description, so I didn't have the solid idea of how she looks. Be because the style was also inconsistent, and the, pe like the way I didn't know how exactly my character looks, her appearance were even more inconsistent, like, it's very strange what has happened in this chapter. I figured out how she looks like by the end of chapter 3, and then from there on I was able to keep her consistent. But then I was able to go in chapter 1 and the beginning of chapter 3 and just tweak around, like, kind of how, how I drew her there, and would be decently satisfied with it. But chapter 2 is so crazy in its style, so it's really impossible to just do simple tweaks I would try but then I was like well I'm not even using the the same brush I'm using the rest of my comic because like everything is very strange I definitely was postponing publishing publishing printing my comic because I knew that chapter two stands out so much and I as a person who works as an artist professionally and I could not possibly accept this quality level. I didn't want people to open the comic and then, you know, go through it, like open it in one area and then open it in another area and don't even know that this is the same character. It's unacceptable if I'm the only artist who is drawing it and actually, like, I just didn't like this visual inconsistency. Yeah, so the problem was I had to redraw a lot of pages in chapter two and a lot, I mean a lot, I calculated and around 30 pages needed semi-series red draws, around 15 pages needed major redraws and a couple of pages needed like major major like changes like basically complete redrawing of the page. So this bulk of work, understanding that this is what I need to do, which means if I'm working on this I'm not working on chapter 8, I'm not going forward, I'm literally going really back and figuring out this whole style thing because also style is more, I don't know, uh, it's, I, I knew that's a lot of work and I was kind of like horrified and apprehensive to even tackle it. So that's one thing about this style change it redraws, but what happened with my pitch? Well, <clears throat> I swear I didn't uh, inhale some helium. Basically, and another problem was that a lot of people actually like chapter two, because some pages are so detailed that a lot of people really like the, the this, this is the level of details for the comic page, which is insustainable, unfortunately, and, but I know that a lot of people like them, and I know that a lot of people would not like that I'm redrawing those pages, and they will be like, not even interested in, not even 
let alone buying the printed version, but just at all interested with my idea of redrawing these pages. So I knew that I'm gonna be upsetting some of my readers, which is, this is the thing that you don't want to do as a comic creator. This is, you don't want to upset people who you draw for. That's just, um, you know, that's not what you want to do. So this is kind of was was going through my head and this is the problems that I was dealing with. So to me it was a matter of making harsh decisions. So I had to make a decision that I'm gonna print first chapter one to five and if people don't want to buy it it's okay but at least it is available. If people want to have printed versions because next chapters there are gonna be a lot of chapters and there will be extra information in the next issue, <laughs> printed issue. Uh, but for now I just realized I have to be at peace with what I want for my comic and I want it to be narratively structured, those bundles to be narratively coherent. First printed version, first bundle is gonna be chapter one to five. So this is the decision I made. And then another decision I made is that I am indeed gonna go and redraw chapter two. And this was a very difficult decision because I was also very scared. I wasn't sure that I can pull it off. And I still didn't pull it off, actually. I'm still in process of doing this, but I'm way over 50% of redraws. And maybe I have just six pages left to actual serious redraws. So, and I completed 20 something, uh, math is hard, but basically it's, um, just a few of them left and I see the light in the end of the tunnel and now I feel comfortable talking about it. And that was another hard decision that I had to make. What helped me is that I, I basically just opened the folder and dropped all the pages of all the five chapters in there and just looked through them and created a list, like a realistic list of all the pages I want to edit and why and I spread it out through categories. I spread out pages that I want to edit because I didn't like certain things in them. For example, I have category four, it's a guy's face, consistency only. I have category four, adjusting the brush strokes only to make them consistent and then I had the whole uh, situation of like chapter two and making those pages work and another uh, category I have of a background improvement because I had sometimes I have grass like actual little grasslings I don't know drawn and another a page later on I wouldn't have it so I wanted to have the quality consistent so it created a very realistic list of everything I needed to do and I just looked at it and it was a lot of work it was a terrifying amount of work but I realized that if I'm gonna do it, I have to look through the problem square in the face, acknowledge what I'm gonna do, and because I wanna have the best quality for my published product, the, the printed version of my comic, so I have to do it. I started the work on several pages at once. I would just open, start drawing a little bit, start redrawing, then open another one, start redrawing. I just wanted to kind of cover as much base to get a feel of how it's going to be. And I didn't tell anybody, like anybody, like I didn't tell my readers that I'm doing this until maybe I officially redrew maybe five to six pages. This is where I started realizing it is possible to do. I'm doing it. I'm letting people know. So that's kind of the first, I think, entry that I'm gonna do in this video of me talking about how I'm preparing my comic for publishing. In the next video I'm gonna do about challenges of the redraw and maybe like some of them. And then I'm gonna do, I lead you through stages of what I'm doing next as I'm going through those stages. So that's in this video I wanted to talk about the problems that I'm having and the, the decision I had to make and kind of the blocks that were stopping me because I realized I would never commit to actually preparing a printed version. They will also find some excuses but these were actually the reasons why because I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't make those decisions and they were blocking me. So I hope this diary entry kind of like on the situation was interesting for you and I don't know, I thought I wanted to share and let you know how it goes and yeah, let me know guys what you think about this video and yeah, let me know if you had similar situation, if there's sometimes when you have to go back on your art and fix it or redraw it or do something and I would be happy to hear from you and feel I'm not alone but yeah so that's it for this video and stand by for the next video when I'm gonna talk about the actual details of the redraw and show you more of the videos about it so yeah thank you so much guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video thank you guys